This video is going to show you how to SQLize your C-Tree data. C-Tree RTG, or just C-Tree, is an alternative data file system to JICM. Both are included in ISCOBOL Evolve, and you can create C-Tree files instead of JICM files with just a configuration variable. Now, there's a lot of benefits to doing this, but one is that with ISCOBOL Enterprise, C-Tree can also work as a database that allows you to access your data files with SQL statements. In order to do this, you need to SQLize your data files or link them to the C-Tree server. And this video is going to show you different ways to do that. The first way that we're going to SQLize our data is we're going to create some C-Tree ISAM files with a test program. We're going to SQLize them using the CTUtil that comes with your ISCOBOL installation. Before we get started, let's check our setup. When I installed C-Tree, I installed it as a service so that it would start automatically. I also want to open up one of C-Tree's tools called C-Tree SQL Explorer. And I'm going to use this to view my tables. I'm going to use all the defaults, the local host, this computer, the port number that's default, the default uh, database name, the login information is lowercase admin, password is uppercase admin. I'll say OK. And you can see under admin tables, we have none. So we're going to create some. And we'll come back and look at them here. The test programs I'm going to use are in the C-Tree installation under Driver, C-Tree is COBOL, and Tutorials. And there are two programs, Prog File 1 and Prog Multi, that we're going to run. Let's take a look at those. I have my IDE here. And we'll click and drag and look at File 1. This is going to create a file called file1, and we're going to make a table called file1 from it. In order to SQLize, you need to define the table fields, and that's going to be through an XML file called an ISS. We'll create that in a little bit. But we do want to define how these fields are going to look in a table. In this particular one, we want to add to the file description that this is in this format. So we have an EFD directive. The other unusual thing in this program is that we're setting the file index to C-Tree. The default is JISAM. So by setting it to C-Tree, we're telling the runtime, make a C-Tree data file instead of a JISAM. Other than that, there's nothing unusual about this program. The other one we're going to run is Prog Multi. Let's click and drag that over here. And you can see, again, we're going to have a data file named file M. But our tables, our table names, are going to be different depending on this F type. So when F type is M, it's going to put the data into a table called American people. When it's E, European people, etc. Also in this program, we have set the same environment variable to tell it to create a C-Tree data file instead of JISAM. So let's run these two. And the best way to run our samples is to open up the readme.txt and follow the instructions. Now there are several different ways in this folder to make a, a C-Tree table. One is with the, the CTUtil completely. We're not going to do that because that's for testing purposes only. We are going to create a C-Tree data file using a COBOL program. So I have my COB command here. And we are in the C-Tree is COBOL tutorials. And we're going to follow these instructions. So ISCC, we're going to compile both of our programs and this switch here is going to create our data descriptions that we need. So now we should have our classes, our two classes that we just compiled. We also have these ISS files and these ISS files are XML files that describe our data. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to run these programs to create the C-Tree data files. So cut and paste for prog file one. And you can see that it wrote and read these 52 records. And prog multi, eight records. So now we have created C-Tree data files. Let's take a look at those. I didn't use file prefix. So they were put in the default location, which is in the C-Tree 
installation under server SQL data. And there's our file one and file M. Now these are C tree files. If I ran JUtil info, it would say that the file is broken because it's not a JISAM file. But if I use the CTUtil info, it gives me a lot of information about it. It is a C tree file. I'll do the same with file M. There we go. So now we have these, we want to SQLize them. We want to bring them here into our table area. If I were to refresh, even though we have these C tree files, we don't have tables. And I'm going to go back to my test area. In our samples, we have some help for you. And these are these batch files. So let's take a look at the batch files. I'll do it this way. All right, so here's your command to SQLize your data. We're going to use the CTUtil utility. We're going to pass it a configuration file that has the information in it to connect to the database. Let's take a look at that. It's right here, ctree.conf. It is supplied with the installation. And it has the default values. This is the name, default name of my SQL Server. And of course, I started on my local host. And here's, again, the, the username and the password to get into this SQL Server. All right, so we're going to pass that configuration file. We're going to pass ctutil the command to SQLize. The information it needs is the name of the file to SQLize, the file description in XML format. That's this file1.iss that I created with the dash EFC switch the name of the database to put it into, and we're using the default, and the data storage convention. Now this is the default, so I didn't need to put it in here, but it is here to show you that you can change this to, if you have a different data storage convention. So I'm going to close this, and I will double click. This is going to link file one into the database. And there the operation completed successfully. Let's go look at it. So right click on the tables. And refresh, we should see file one. There it is, file one has been SQLized. So now I can run a SQL statement against it, and get my data. So far, so good. Let's see what happens when we link file M. Remember, that's the one with the different table names. It's going to have the same ctutil command using the SQLize. We'll pass that information we need to get into the server, then the name of the file, the name of the file description, the name of the database, and the storage convention, again, the default. So let's double click on this. And again, operation completed successfully. And let's take a look at see if those tables were created. Right click and refresh. And now we have these tables that remember we had EFDs in our program to create these tables depending on the F type. We can run a SQL statement from any of these. And there we have it. We have SQLized some C tree data files from the files. We just created C tree files with a program. So this next method, we're going to create a ctree isam file with a program, and we're going to SQLize it at the same time. We're going to do it all with configuration variables rather than using the ctutil command. So if you remember, when we created the ctree isam file, we had a variable set in the program. And then when we SQLized it, we had a command line for the ctutil. So if we're going to do this all at once, we need to put all that information into the configuration when we run the program. And I've created a file called Runtime Properties that has all this information. So remember when we set file index to ctree j, that's what we're doing here. Remember in the ctree.conf we set this information, the name of the server, the location, which is localhost, the login information, lowercase admin, uppercase admin. So that information is here. We told it what the name of the database was and what the storage convention was. So th there are those. The last two is telling the runtime that we do want to create the tables as we go and that we want to use the ISS files that are in this folder. 
So I have my runtime properties prepared and I'm going to compile my index with an EFC switch to create the ISS file and then I'm going to run it with these runtime properties to create the file as a ctree file but also to create the table in the same step. So here we'll start with ISCC, remember the EFC com uh, switch and then we're going to compile indexed .cbl. So now we have our index class. We also have a file index.iss. So now we can run isc run. We need the runtime properties file and then indexed. And it's done. And here's our file indexed. So let's go look at our table. And there's our file indexed. So that's another way to SQLize your data. Use the configuration variables so that when you create a new file, it automatically creates a ctree file and a ctree table. The last way I want to show you is to bypass the ctree data file altogether and just use embedded SQL to write directly from your program to a ctree table. To do this, we're going to use another ctree sample. Again, I'm in my ctree folder under driver. We had been looking at ctree.iscobol. Now we're going to go down one to the SQL is COBOL folder. In the tutorials, we have an embedded SQL program. So let's take a look at that. Click and drag it over to the IDE. You can see this has your typical embedded SQL. We have a few extra fields. Remember our database name and our admin and admin so that when we connect, it will connect correctly. We are setting a couple of environment variables that point to the ctree JDBC. And here we have our connection information, the default port and local host. Other than that, this is typical embedded SQL. So let's run this. And again, the best way to run the samples is to open up the readme and you can cut and paste. The first step is to start to search the SQL engine. We don't need to do that because it started automatically as our service. Open up a command prompt to the tutorials in SQL is COBOL. Done that. Make sure the ctree JDBC jar is added to the class path and it tells you where it is. It's in this subfolder. So we're going to set class path to our ctree JDBC.jar. And of course, I want to keep the rest of my class path too. At step four, I'm going to cut and paste this. And then we will run it. It's created this table. Let's go to our SQL Explorer and look for that table. So we're going to right click and refresh. And here we have it IS table. Remember, this was created with embedded SQL. Unlike these other files that were SQLized, this file was created directly into the Ctree server. That's why these icons look different. In order to change the files that were SQLized, if we wanted to, for instance, add a column, we would need to unlink them, create a new ISS, and re-SQLize them so that they match the data file. But since there's no data file, connected here, we can change this one directly. That's why when I right click, I can alter the table. But when I right click on one of the orange ones, the alter table is grayed out. And there you have it, three different ways to SQLize your data or get your data into the Ctree server so that you can access your files as a relational database. Thank you.